गुरुर् ब्रह्मा गुरुर् विष्णु गुरुर् देवो महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः Many a times we want something, but we are searching for something else. Such as all of us are necessarily searching for happiness in our life. But that search for happiness is directed in the objective world, and then we struggle. and then we do get happiness from the objective world but we are unable to understand what is the source of that happiness it is something like this we get up in the morning and develop a habit that i have to have a cup of tea so you take a cup of tea in the morning for a period of one week within one week our mind gets tuned habituated and on the eighth day you don't take a cup of tea so you become very miserable uncomfortable angry frustrated and then you find out why i am miserable then oh ho today i have not taken a cup of tea so i take a cup of tea and everything is so nice oh ho oh. now i understood the source of my happiness is in a cup of tea in this manner we start imagining that happiness has come to me through a cup of tea now let us analyze this experiment suppose i am a bengali now for a bengali where is the happiness either in rasgulla or in the one of the incarnations of lord fish they are great devotees of the lord they consume the lord straight away atmasat now if that rasgulla really contains happiness then what should happen for example one rasgulla is equivalent to one unit of happiness so i take one rasgulla i become one happy then i take second rasgulla i become two happy i take tenth rasgulla i become ten happy i take fiftieth rasgulla i become fiftieth miserable not happy now if really happiness was contained in that object with the addition of every additional rasgulla i should have been happy but this doesn't happen therefore we have to search where from the happiness is coming one second observation i am a malayali and i have a friend bengali because both malayalis and bengalis communist people <laughs> both the state are uh, ruled or ruined by the communists <clears throat> so i as a malayali friend of a bengali is offered one rasgulla come on mosha bhalo ache you take this now i hate that rasgulla you bengalis nice milk you destroy first and make a lump spongy and put it into a slurry of sweet and take it out and eat like a dead rat see i don't want now if happiness was contained of rasgulla like fire is hot for everybody there is no choice in the same manner 
if happiness was contained in the rasgulla everybody would have liked it everybody would have become happy about it but this does not happen therefore now we go one step further but it is true we cannot deny our experience that when i eat rasgulla i am happy when i go and see some movie i am happy when i go and stand in chaupati and eat that biological salt along with the uh, bhel puri i do like it there is no doubt about it and i really enjoy now this is the crossroad we have come worldly objects do give me happiness and yet they are not the source of happiness therefore where this happiness that i am searching for is coming this is the inquiry now we go third step when i want a cup of tea for example at that particular time my whole system gets biologically clocked that a particular time comes my system wants tea and then there is a constant hunger of tea from within and that constant hunger of tea from within creates a lot of agitations in the mind a pressure and if i take a cup of tea at the right time what happens these agitations born out of a desire those agitations born out of desire they are quieted because desire is fulfilled if the desire is fulfilled what exactly happens that our mind comes to its natural condition what is the natural condition of the mind desireless mind is happiness think so what we are searching all of us in our life we want happiness we want happiness so we want happiness from our children how children should behave according to my choice this will never happen so our desire can never be fulfilled and we can never be happy because of children second thing i have a desire that my wife should not go and purchase too many things another desire it is an impossible desire to be fulfilled so i as a husband can never be happy then i as a wife i want a husband who will give me so much of pocket money that i cannot spend only imagination it can never happen therefore as a wife i will be always miserable so what we are doing we are creating a situation in our mind where desires are bubbling out ad infinitum and that mind which is a desire ridden can never know what happiness is see now fourth step fourth step is i have imagined that a particular object a particular thing a particular situation is a source of happiness i only imagine like if you keep a bottle of whiskey now a one a person who is a spiritual starts his day with a white horse so when he will see that he will be very happy may another person ganga jali who does not take anything except ganges water so when he will see that bottle he will become very disturbed and angry how come in the temple you have got whiskey so two things one wants that particular thing other person hates that particular thing now both these things presence and absence of the thing outside is only our projection so one imagines it is a source of happiness other imagines it is a source of misery therefore it is we who have given value to the outer world and after that we have given value we run after the world 
thing. So if we have given value and we run after the world, what should be the solution? We have to devalue. If I have started smoking, you cannot stop smoking on my behalf. Like, you know, many people do that. Panditji, kindly do uh, Mrityunjaya mantra for me. He wants to leave. And Panditji should do the Mrityunjaya. That proxy is not possible on the spiritual path. It is possible in the religious field. Religion has nothing to do with spirituality. Be very clear about it. Religion is a combined spiritual attempt to confuse each other mutually at a high degree. It's called as religion. Therefore, here the teacher says, very systematically, if you want to achieve something great in life, these are the techniques. First, Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nistraigunya Bhavarjuna. As long as you live in the field of relativity, you can never be happy. See, the very word is so beautiful. We say, who is she? Oh, she is my relative. Now, from a relative, you can never get absolute happiness. Because she herself is relative. How can she give you absolute happiness? What we try to do, therefore, we collect many relatives. But the law of mathematics or statistics is summation of the relative atoms is not equal to absolute. In the absolute, relativity can be imagined. But the summation of the imagined relativity is never the absolute. Therefore, the teacher tells first, if you want to discover happiness in the outer world as well as inner world, first decide. How long are you going to live in this relative world of competition and frustration? First principle. Arise above this. Let us not get lost into these small little things. For that, what is to be done? Nirdvandvaha. Nirdvandvaha is the world has by its nature everything existing in pairs of opposite. You know, there is one Hindi song. You all might have heard it. Honge Kamayab Ekadin. And then every time they go on adding, in Dunya in this world, everybody will be happy. Ekadin. But when that Ekadin will come, nobody tells. Never there is happiness without miseries. Never there is birth without death. Never there is riches without poverty. Never there is beauty without ugliness. The whole structure of the world is existing in mutually cancelling pairs of opposite. How simple it is. In one family, there are seven daughters born. And then this fellow is so miserable, I don't know why God has given me all the daughters. Other fellow is dying to have daughters, but he is getting only sons. Both of them miserable. But if you take the total population structure, in the total population structure, the male-female ratio is almost one is to one. The more you go to the infinite, the problems get mutually cancelled. The more you remain in the cocoon existence of relativity, problems are magnified beyond proportion. Therefore, Nirdvandvaha, Accept the world that this is the anatomy of the world. Accept no choice. There is a choice. Accept and be happy or accept and be miserable. Choice is given. But there is no choice regarding acceptance. To be miserable or happy, that is a choice. Now if we have tick mark, I want to be miserable. What the Lord will do? Out of compassion, Tathastu, may you be miserable. Therefore, friends, please remember, none of us is miserable because of anybody in this world. It is we have chosen. Therefore, Nirdvandvaha. 
Sometimes you get tea, sometimes you don't get tea. Sometimes things happen according to your choice, sometimes they don't happen. Now if you take this principle, what is the principle? The principle is, suppose you have zero expectation from your wife. And when you go home, you have to take out the food fresh from the fridge and thaw it freshly and eat it cold, cold. Suppose this is your routine. One day you go and something goes wrong and you get hot food. So what happens? Asharyavat Pashyati Kaschidenam we all are happy only because of surprises. We are never happy by the routine life. Whenever we have expectations, we introduce an element of mechanical existence. In mechanical existence, there is no joy. When you go to the office the same way, same boss, same you, same working table and same frustration and same frustration back home, same wife, same can and non-stop going on. There is no charm in that life. On the contrary, if you have zero expectation, every time everything is a surprise, you go to the railway station and imagine your train is on time. What is the great in that? You go to the station with an expectation, train is not on time. You go there and it is there. What a surprise. Out of a small little thing, you can become happy if you have no expectations. This is very simple technique. Another example, we get our salaries, whatever we get. By getting salaries, nobody is happy. But Hello India. And then you get one lottery. And in that one lottery, you get, let us say, only 100 rupees. Your salary is 25,000 rupees a month. But you get a lottery where you get 100 rupees. Your happiness of getting 100 rupees through lottery is more than getting the mechanical 25,000 a month. Because when you bought the ticket, you never expect it. I don't get it. I am a special brand. I am made only to purchase the tickets, not to get the lot. Therefore, Nirdvandvaha, rise above this. Never expect anything from the world. Lesser you expect, happier you are. The other day, one person asked me this question. Samidhi, kindly tell me the secret of your happiness. I said, I have no expectation from anybody in this world. He said, please give me some example. Then I can understand. I said, look here. I go and go on talking to the world for last 20, 25 years. I must have given more than um, 5, 10,000 lectures. And yet, I never expected that the world should change because of my talk. And therefore I am happy. If I had expected, I have been talking constantly, non-stop, but the world is the same wretched one, then I will be miserable. On the contrary, I am very happy for your cooperation. <laughs> you know why? The reason is, if you will improve, if you will change, where will I go? I will have to change my profession. Isn't it? Suppose I have a business of hair oil. And the providence takes me to a country where everybody is a deforested head. I will have to close down my business. Isn't it? Who will buy the hair oil? In the same deforested head means bald leaves. So the business of hair oil cannot function in the bald country in the same manner. The business of philosophy and wisdom 
cannot function among the wise people. So we want other wise people. Keep it up, keep it up, so that we can survive. Never expect anything from anybody. You are bound to be happy. Nirdvandraha. Then Nitya Sattvastaha. For that the technique is always keep your attention on the quality of your own mind. When you are interacting with the world, see how your mind is. What happens normally? We are all the time focusing attention on the outer world. When I am going, what the people will think about my uniform? When I go, what they will think about me? We forget people have got better things to look at. We are not worthy of getting attention even from a passing dog. But we go on imagining. All the time our attention is only on the world. As long as your attention is on the world, you can never be happy. Therefore, focus attention on your own heart. When you are interacting with the world, what is the quality of your heart? Are you getting attached? Do you get hatred? Do you get uh, honor? Do you get dishonor? Are you disturbed? Are you elated? Are you frustrated? Observe those points. And when you come to know that your interaction with the world has left no scar of any impression on your mind, then alone your mind remains strong. See friends, our normal skin, if you take, it is strong. And if you have a wound or something, and then there is a scar formed on that skin. Now the skin supporting the scar is weaker than the normal skin. In the same manner, our mind carrying the scar load off Hatred, jealousy, frustration, honor, dishonor, depression, likes, dislikes. With all these patches on our mind, the strength of our mind goes to dogs. And such people become weaklings. And such people can be taken for a ride by anybody. Just see, suppose somebody comes and uh, tries to tease you and you don't get teased, the other fellow will automatically withdraw. The moment you cooperate with him, he teases and you get teased. He gets more inspired. When Vivekananda was in uh, Rishikesh, he used to go for Viksha. And uh, there was one Mahatma always watching this young man and when he is to take his bhiksha and come, there is to be one monkey there on the way. In Vrindavan there are many Mahatmas, many monks and many monkeys. Monk and monkey spelling is same. So, when he is to take his food and go, that monkey will come and bounce and take the thing from his hand. And every day the same thing, frustrated, sometimes you throw the food, run away. One day one Mahatma said to him, look here my child, if you cannot face one monkey in your life, how you will face the whole world? Don't run away. Stand firm. Look into the eyes of that monkey. When you look into the eyes of a problem, the problem changes its spelling. The problem is respelled as challenge. The moment you look at the situation as a challenge, your inner strength gurgles out like a Niagara and everything is washed away with your inner strength. Therefore, when we are working in the outer world, Focus attention on what is the quality of your mind. Somebody says, you are so nice, you start floating in the air. Everybody says, I am good. The next person comes, 
Swami ji he looks so stupid, stupid, immediately going diving below the water. So our existence is determined by the comments of the world. Very important. We don't have to get carried away. And when we get carried away, we fall in love. This is how the young boys and girls, they fall in love. Because of only this thing. One uh, useless boy going to a garden. All those who go to garden in their young days, youthful days, they are basically useless. Who has time to go to the garden? So one useless boy goes to the garden. And there are another useless girl, she also goes to the garden. Now this useless fellow says to the useless girl, you look very sweet. And then she starts believing it. It was only a drama. I tell you one case about this. This happened in Australia. There was one girl, she had fallen in love with a man who was very bad criminal and very much elder than the girl. And she knew what she is doing is wrong. But her problem, she was talking to the doctor, her problem is she cannot get out of it. So she went to the doctor and said, please help me. I know this man is bad. I should not run after him. And yet I can't stop. What is pulling me, I do not know. Then the whole history was analyzed and she told, in your last life, when you were young, your mother died, your father was alone, you were looking after your father, and therefore you did not accept any proposal from any boy, slowly you became old, nobody ever asked you even once, Thereafter, when your father died, and you died with that hunger in you, somebody should come and propose me. And in this life, this useless fellow, drunkard and every kind of bad things, he was the first person who came and proposed you. Honey, you look so sweet. And that one sentence was enough to capture her, and she has fallen in love. See how we become weaklings. Therefore, let us be strong within. Nitya Sattva Saha. Let us keep the inner poise, inner strength perfect. And then Niryoga Kshema. Niryoga Kshema. We compromise in our life for two things. One thing, if I want something, and if I don't have, then to get that particular thing, I compromise at many uh, levels. Because that want for the worldly object is so strong in resisting, that I am ready to compromise to any extent. That is called as, if I don't have anything, the desire to have is called a yoga. And another problem that we all have, whatever we have, we want to maintain it as it is all through. Kshema is protection of what we have and yoga is getting what we don't have. So all our energy in our life is spent only in this. So earlier I want to get married because I don't have a wife. That is yoga. And thereafter I want to keep my wife happy. Kshema. Both impossible propositions. As a result, we continue living through our life and continue to be miserable. Therefore, near yoga kshema, if you are working sincerely, you are bound to get the result. There is nothing to worry about in life. Friends, the more you worry in life, the more you bury yourself under the load of your own wrong thinking. Worryings don't deliver solutions. If you want to get something in life, plan properly and execute that plan. Only by worrying, nothing has happened in life. Therefore, Niryoga Kshema. And Niryoga Kshema, we can discover Atmavan. Live in the dignity of self-esteem. Many times when we lose self-esteem, we bow down 
to a most disgusting level of existence. And friends, when a person commits a crime for the first time, he is afraid, he has a guilt, he feels bad about it. Then he commits the crime second time, third time. Thereafter he becomes habitual in the same manner. When we live in the dignity of self-respect, self-esteem, such a person can never go the wrong way. So these are the techniques, five techniques the teacher has given. That you want something, but you are running after something. So Atmavan, discover that you are the source of total happiness. Not the outer world. Sometimes it happens that you are not hungry and somebody brings out of sheer love something for you. So seeing the love, you take that and discover happiness. Because you could make somebody happy. Sometimes you are very hungry and excellent food is in front of you and that time your mobile phone tends you. Somebody near and dear to you is dead. That food, that hunger, everything that is in front of you is totally gone. So where is the source of happiness? If I am okay, you are okay and the world is okay. If I am miserable, the world is most useless. You must have seen Hindi cinemas. If you have not seen, you have done nothing in life. I tell you, Hindi cinema is a source of great wisdom, provided you are wise. Only wise people can see the wisdom. See, there you must have seen various songs. When some character is frustrated, what is the kind of songs come? And when the character is happy, what are the kinds of songs come? Suppose somebody is frustrated, dejected. He will not sing, sing a song. I am happy, you are happy, let's go and dance. No. If he is miserable, then the song will start coming. Dard uthane ke liye mai to jiye jata So the source of happiness is nowhere outside. It is you, Atma Vaan, focus attention on yourself. The moment you understand this basic principle, the world will never be heavy for you. After that, Yavan Artha Udapane Sarvataha Samlutodake Tavan Sarveshu Vedeshu Brahmanasya Vijanataha Most powerful statement. He who has discovered this principle that you are the source of your happiness and misery for that person doesn't have to run in the outer world for searching wisdom and philosophy. We go to the world. Sir, I have got this problem, what I should do? And if I am a psychiatrist, what I will do? I will maintain your level of confusion for maintaining my level of bank balance. They have to be leveled properly. But if I have known now that I am the source of misery in my life, and I am the source of happiness in my life. I will not go begging in the world for happiness. I will not go for getting advice from the world. You will see this very peculiar phenomena. Suppose you go to somebody and the somebody is having some problem. And by mistake he considers you to be wise. Mistakes happen. He considers you to be wise. And he says, uh, Guptaji, um, I have got this problem. Can you help me? Then Guptaji starts. Look here. You are worried about your children. This phase, everybody has to go through. When I was a young parent, I had the same kind of problem. Don't worry. Now they are problem for you. When they will be grown up, you will be problem for them. Don't worry. It happens. Now what I am talking? I am talking all philosophy. 
But when I am going through the problem, that time where this philosophy evaporates. Therefore, he says, Brahmanasya Vijanata. He who has understood this principle, for him, Tavan Sarveshu Vedeshu. For him, the advice and guidance from the outer source is not required. Therefore, we go for guidance and uh, understanding from the outer world. Now here the example given is Sarvataha Samplutodake. If you are living in the midst of Ganges and there is plenty beautiful, excellent, pure water available for you to drink, will you that time carry a bisleri with you? No. In the same manner, he who has self-confidence, he who has clear understanding, he who is not clouded by the vision of biasness, he who is not affected by the pairs of opposite, he whose peace is not disturbed by honor and dishonor, for such a person, external invitation of wisdom is not required. And such a person can face the challenges of life from the strength from within. Friends, there are many sources of support we have. First support, money. With money support, we go for horse trading in the politics. Isn't it? For what? So that the government is in the stable. For that, we go for horse trading first. That is one power, one support. Second is the support of the people. Third support is the support of the emotional corruption. Fourth support, you create a doubt and dependence in somebody and conquer him. But all these supports are never available to you all the time. The real support is your Atma Bala, the inner strength. Those who have discovered the inner strength, they can never be enslaved by the temptations of the world. Those who are weaklings, they fall prey to the worldly small little things. And therefore, if we really want to discover happiness or self-respect, discover inner strength. Those who are strong from within, they alone can stand to all the climates of life. But those who are not strong from within, they are constantly searching for some or the other support. After that, this is the principle told. Now, after having told the principle, if it is only told to others, pass on the wisdom. When we pass on wisdom, it is called as philosophy. And when we practice philosophy in our life, then it is called as wisdom. Now, how to translate this philosophy of life so that we become wise? This is the technique given in the 47th verse of the second chapter. Now, this is the most popular verse of Bhagavad Gita. And the most wonderful about this verse is, people always quote it in marriage parties, in the Lions Club party, in the Rotation Club party, in the inner wheel, in the outer wheel, in the no wheel. And in that quotation, they quote only one quarter, Pauva. They don't know the full verse. And the verse is, Karmanye Madhikaraste, Ma Faleshu Kadachana, Ma Karma Falahe Turbu, Ma Te Sangha Astu Akarmani. These are the four principles of living life scientifically. Very important. If you want to become the not Karodpati, in Karodpati also there were four options, isn't it? Here there are four options. These are not options, these are all compulsory. We accept these four principles. This is called as Karma Yoga Chatusutri, four 
principles of living life scientifically. First principle, te adhikaraha karmani eva. You have right to act rightly. First principle. And now see the beauty. When you work, a very, very attentive, very subtle way we are going now. When you work, and at the time of doing your work, if you have discovered happiness, nobody in the world can make you miserable. First principle. For example, I am talking and I imagine that you are hearing. How can I say listening? Seeing, I can see your eyes. But whether you are hearing or not, that is your personal uh, affair. How can I say? Now, in this, when I am talking to you, that time, now if I am happy, nobody in the world can make me happy. Because happiness can be experienced only in the present. The other alternative word for happiness is being in the present. First. Second thing, we all work in the present. Third thing, we work with our own hands. Fourth thing, our hands are in our hands. Fifth thing, therefore, those who express every action of their life as an expression of happiness, such a person can never be miserable, whatever he has to do. It doesn't matter what you are doing. What matters is how you are doing that. The first scientific principle, if you want to succeed in life, if you want to make the most of your life, this is the first principle. Whatever you do, do cheerfully, happily. And when you do anything cheerfully and happily, you are automatically weaned the way from the past on one side and the future on the other side. Because happiness cannot be in future. Happiness cannot be in past. Very simple technique. Therefore, te adhikaraha, you have right to be happy, you have no right to be miserable. First principle. Second principle, if you want to be really happy, remain only in the present. And if you remain in the present, whatever you have to do in your life, do it happily, cheerfully. Not like that, again I have to go to the school, I don't want to go. I told you this joke long time back. I don't want to go to school. Beta, you have to go to school. Please go. This is no way you can stop. No, Mama, I don't want to go. Every time I go, there is a strike, the teacher, the student, and I'm fed up. I don't want to go. You cannot avoid, my dear child. You have to go. But why, Mom? Because you are a principal. Isn't it? Now, a person who goes to the school with this kind of mood, do you think he will enjoy his life? Therefore, the first scientific principle, karmani. you have right to be happy, and you can be rightly happy when you express every action of your life as an expression of joy, cheer, inspiration, fulfillment, and time pass. Don't become serious in life. Now I am doing karmande vadika raste. Va, va. Don't become serious in life. All those who have become serious in life, they have not understood ABCD of life. Life is an expression of divine bliss. In the expression of divine bliss, there cannot be material blisters. Blisters come when we do not express the inherent happiness. Such people are all the time looking for happiness outside. So the first principle, 
कर्मण्ये वाधिकार अस्ते सेकंड मा फलेशु कदाचन यू हैव नो राइट ऑन द फ्रूट ऑफ एक्शन नाउ सी हाउ इट इज एक्शन इज डन इन द प्रेजेंट व्हाई यू डू द एक्शन टू गेट हैप्पीनेस एंड इफ यू वांट टू गेट हैप्पीनेस आफ्टर द वर्क इज कंप्लीट व्हाट यू आर डूइंग You are postponing your own happiness in the future period of time. Take an example. I am talking to you, and now I imagine that I should be, I will be happy when my lecture is over, and when I will come down, and then all of you will say, "Swami Ji, you really spoke well," but none of you ever say that. then what happens to me itna gala phad phad ke bola nobody even appreciates me so while talking i was not happy in the future because you did not appreciate me i am not happy so what is the net result net result is i am unhappy in the present because i have postponed my happiness in the future and i am unhappy in the future because future never comes think This is not the meaning that karma ne vadika raste ma phale su kadachana. That means do the job, don't take the salary. That is a foolishness. That is not the meaning. Take double the salary. <laughs> That is not the meaning. So ma phale su kadachana. Remember one very important thing. There are only two to get happiness or you get misery. Sukha dukha. these are the only two results of all our actions in life a person is happy when he gets an ordinary bicycle to ride other person is happy when he gets a honda to ride both of them got only happiness whether it is out of a bicycle or it is out of a four wheeler it makes no difference similarly one person becomes miserable because he is not married other person becomes miserable because he is married now see misery also is the result only of marriage or no marriage therefore there are only two results in life one is happiness other is misery so he who has discovered happiness at the time of doing the action he doesn't have to wait for the future what we do and then we make a statement to our children is this the day to look forward we have brought you to this level what we have not done for you and now you are deserting us mother father become miserable looking at their own child they forget they have made the child miserable when the child was small friends if we as parents are happy in bringing up the children there our relationship ends don't hang on on their neck till they die or you die leave them free therefore ma phale shu kadachana live in the present whatever comes wonderful and go ahead be very attentive when you do not go again and again in the future if i do this that will happen this will happen and when that happens then i will be happy it is only khayali pulao it is only imaginary things it has no reality in that it is virtual existence not the actual there was a pot maker very hot summer like these days and he was sitting below a tree with so many pots and hundreds of pots and sitting as in a cot and every day waiting now i have got uh, say about uh, 500 pots per pot if i sell all of them in one month i get 5 rupees so i'll get this much and suppose i get 
this thing for the whole year business. Then I'll get this much. And terrible heat, little bit of shade here and there, kept a danda in the hand so that the animals don't come and dash. And in this manner, dreaming, 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 and then his dream continues about the future. And then when I will have so much of money, do you think I will do this wretched job of selling the parts held with it? And all the parts come down. He has forgotten that he is in the present. This is how the meaning is. Ma faleshu kadachana. Now the third, ma karma fela he Third, very important. See, cause and effect is the worst kind of bondage which human mind has thought of. Everything we want to fix in the language of cause and effect. And we all know how we fix it. Let us take an example. Suppose uh, I commit some murder. Underline, suppose. I have not done anything so far. I don't know what will happen in the future. So far I have not done. Suppose I commit some murder. And then I will hire a lawyer. Now after the lawyer is hired, what that lawyer will try to prove? He will try to prove that I have not committed a murder. Because I have not committed a murder, maybe somebody is killed, but I have not committed, therefore I cannot be hanged to death. Because he who has committed murder, he alone is qualified for that. In the same manner, ma karma phala hetur bhuhu means you act, but do not create the result of your action. And that is possible only when you do not have the sense of doership associated with any action. Take an understanding clearly. When we have bad digestion, this is a sin or a merit. When somebody loses the top, this is a sin or a merit. When somebody goes round and round, this is a sin or a merit. When somebody gets heart attack, this is a sin or a merit. Nothing. Because in this modification, there is no sense of doership. But on the contrary, if I give somebody 5 rupees charity, then I feel I have done so good. So, that act is associated with the doership. So, what is the equation? Action plus doership is equal to deed. There are legal, deeds are signed. Legal actions are not signed. There is a difference between action and a deed. So, whenever action is supported or associated with the sense of doership, a deed takes place and it is deed is called in Sanskrit as karma. We get the karma phala, not the kriya phala. When the body is undergoing modification, that is natural in the prakriti, in the nature. And therefore, what is happening naturally in the nature does not create sin or merit. But when any action is associated with the sense of doership, I have done that, then the result will be born and you will be responsible for answering that result. Therefore the teacher says, live in this world in such a manner, if you are doing something good, so what? That is, you are supposed to do. Therefore, be good. For the sake of being good, not to claim from the world that you are good. See the difference. This is what our Punjabi Bandhu say. Neki kar kue me dal. Do good and forget. But what we do? 
we do good and we want recognition from the world. And the moment you want recognition from the world, you get not recognition, you get blows. When father was talking to me, along with his wife, about their child, Swamiji, what will you do if your son says like this? I said, you are asking an impossible question, but you have freedom. You belong to a democratic setup, ask. My son told me the other day, me and my wife, if you cannot look after me, why did you produce? Swamiji, I never expected this thing from my son. I said, look here, he has told you the truth. Now, if you imagine that you have produced the son, you suffer. But if you understand, the child is born through you, not to you. Whole understanding will change. But we have this funny notion, humne bachche paida kiya, you can do nothing in this world. There are many couples who are unable to produce at any cost. Therefore, we imagine that I am doing something, I am doing something. Therefore, friends, ma karma falaheturbu. Let the actions be naturally as they are happening. When you are in tune with the divinity within, only goodness will come out of you. And when we are taking a detour from the divinity, only ugly actions will come out. And therefore, when I act in tune with the divinity. You cannot have the arrogance of doing good. But when we don't understand this, we do good and we frustrate ourselves. That is why on the rickshaw, I always remember this. Beautifully written. You want to see Guru in your life? Guru is spread everywhere. If we are able to learn from the world. Bhagwan Dattatreya had two dozen Gurus. What is the poverty of having one guru? If we can learn, and if we cannot learn, Bhagwan Krishna could not be the guru of Duryodhana. Therefore, that uh, riksha statement gave the highest wisdom. That is called as Vedas. What was the statement? Neki kar jute kha. Do good and be ready to get shoes from the world. Neki kar jute kha, further he supports. Maine khaye tu bhi kha. They are beautiful. If you understand the simple principle, be good for the sake of being good. Don't be good as an acting. That is why I have got very clear understanding. Those who are goody goody type of people, they are very dangerous. Those who are open-hearted and frank, they are very pure-hearted. Otherwise, all the time, uh, ati vinayat dhurta lakshanam. Those who are too much goody-goody-goody-goody, they are very dangerous people. Be aware about them. Therefore, ma karma phala heturu huhu and the fourth thing. All the problems of our life come because we act. Therefore, why not stop acting? Extremists, we become quickly. Like, you know, in our spiritual path also. Not taking food at all is possible. Eating all the time is also possible. And both these extremes are not spiritual life. The real spiritual life is have control on yourselves and live in such a manner. Eat four times a day, but a very little measured quantity. Then you see what is the meaning of self-control. So here, another extreme. Either we get involved so much in the world that we suffer. Or out of anger we get so much frustrated. Okay, I give up everything. I go out of the house. I become a sannyasi. So getting involved in the world grows the one extreme. 
other extreme becoming a sannyasi and imagining now i have withdrawn from the world but the tragedy is whether you are a grahastha or a sannyasi the mind is with you where will you run away it is the mind which is creating the problem and therefore the teacher says don't take wrong decisions in life if you are suffered because of karma you can rectify because of the karma alone suppose because of the wrong direction you have reached a wrong destination that doesn't mean okay i have been driving wrong i will not drive you now then you will remain there only continue driving but change your course now onwards therefore the teacher say ma te sangha astu akarmani don't lead a life of indolence and inertia friends we are from bombay most of us know this our bombay was called a time few years before as the manchester of india how many mills were running there now the great saviors of the labor people came and they have shaved off all the labors all the machines which were running not for a day or two but for 3 4 5 10 decades they were made to stop the day those machines stop you cannot restart the old machines again the momentum is lost in the same manner when we are living in this world dynamically what we have to do only change the attitude behind action and don't suspend the activity normally what we do when we think about spirituality immediately first thing spirituality means now i have decided to be spiritual therefore i will do nothing only eat or eat convert the beautiful dishes into a filthy garbage that is spirituality no ma te sangha astu akarmani never be lethargic never be indolent don't accept anything in this world as a charity or beggary from anybody earn and then live in the dignity of self respect if we are doing highest crime on the society that highest crime is not burning and killing few people the real crime we all are committing on our society is giving the concession the reservation that is such a subtle crime on those poor people they don't understand this we are making the weaker section more weak important thing if somebody is lame don't have pity on him give him the crutches and let him fight the battle of life give him self respect that is important otherwise we take this as a right as if the whole world owes us you go to south africa earlier that country was so beautiful it was called as the poor man's europe so clean so neat such a wonderful country now the so called democratic forces have pulled down the whole beautiful thing now the rand has fallen the local currency law and order is zero there is no security anywhere nobody can travel by public transport if your car window is down anybody can pull hand take your purse or take your ornaments forcibly nobody can do anything think and what is their logic we have been ruled for so many years now we want to take revenge what is the revenge becoming more barbaric that is not the way one example the other type there was one girl i think it was 12th standard she completed results came all right and one morning when she got up a gujarati girl i am always proud of that girl 
she got up in the morning and could not get up. The lower limbs paralyzed for whatever reason. She started shouting, Mom, please come, I cannot get up. And cried and everything done. Within a period of one or two days, she composed herself. Now I have to live with this. She did not become an, a point of taking mercy and support from anybody. She studied her graduation in commerce. She did her MBA. Then she left India on the wheelchair. I saw her in the US. Doing so well. And see the glory in her eyes. Not pity. Um, I, you know, I got the thing. And when I was there. And then there was a polio attack. And something has happened. And gang, 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 gang. And therefore give me something. That pathetic existence of begging. Concession from the society. It is the, it is the highest insult. That we can inflict on masses. Because of wrong policies. Let us give self-respect. Mati Sangahas to Akarbadi never become lethargic in life. Then you see the beauty of existence. Those who have gone through the tragedies of life, they know what is the meaning of earning money. And those who are living only on the earned money of the parents, they have never understood what is the meaning of the joy of life. Because everything you want, you get. You never know how to earn money. Therefore, when the money comes from anybody without efforts, it is only wasted. And when you earn the money, and then you have to spend, and then you understand the value of life. Therefore, Mate Sangha Astu Akarmani. These are the four principles. If these four principles are perfectly followed in life, we have learned the science of living. And then practice. The more we practice in this dignity of right understanding, commitment, and to express the hidden divinity in us, such a person has a different glow to his personality. One more example I'll give you, probably I gave you earlier. There is one person in Delhi. What is his name? Praveen Bhai or something like that. He is 35 years of age. He is one and half feet tall. If he sits in this chair where I am sitting, his head will not come above the back. Only up to this. He sits. His hands and legs are like the small toy hands and legs. Within his house, he moves on a tricycle. Small tricycle. And he has been listening to me on TV, came to meet me. And his eyes, full of confidence, self-respect, no self-pity. And after talking to him, he said, Swamiji, I want to help you. Tell me how can I help you. You can imagine the confidence that he had. I said, Prabhu, I definitely want help from you. Tell me what you have got abilities. He said, I am a very good writer. I have written many stories. But to be frank with you, Swamiji, I am not a spiritual man. I have never read Bhagavad Gita. I have never gone to Ramayana. None of those things. But I am a good writer. Many books and uh, uh, articles are published. I said, very good. Because you have not studied Bhagavad Gita, this is an asset. Now take all my cassettes, listen them, and convert them into book form, because many people are asking me to do that job. It is not possible for me. So you take the job. Some is it done. Imagine. So I was so touched. On the last day in my lecture in Delhi, I called him on the stage. We honored him with a shawl and a coconut. And then I told uh, Tarun Bhai, uh, give a word to the people. 
and a small little baby type of 30 years old man took the mic in his hand. The mic thickness, this thickness, you know, was more than his hand. And he said, friends, he spoke in Hindi, friends, human birth is rare. We have to achieve something and give something to this world before we go out of this world. When these words cannot motivate us, God will have to correct his mistake. Next life, he will not give us opportunity to be human beings. Otherwise, small little things happen in life. And we stand with, you know, that broken hand taking outside, see some beggars. And that hand they will bring out and look at the hand and give money so I can drink. Highly spiritual. That kind of pathetic, self-pitiable existence is not the creed of scientific existence. Therefore, mate sangaha astu akarmani. And therefore, if this is accepted by us as a preposition of life, now the teacher goes still deeper. He says, Yogastha Guru Karmani Sangam Tyaktva Dhananjaya Siddhya Siddhyoho Samo Bhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchchate. He says first, Yogastha Guru Karmani, what is said in the 17th, 47th verse, that is called, called as the Karma Yoga. Therefore, Karma Yoga is not the Yoga of action. It is a yoga in action. It is not the action that we you makes a yoga. It is the attitude behind the action which converts the karma into a karma yoga. Bhagavad Gita doesn't talk about karma. Bhagavad Gita talks about karma yoga. Karma anyway we are doing. And then we say, Patani kya karam food gay. So about karma we are not short of. But we have to learn karma yoga. Therefore, yoga staha kuru karmani. Therefore, every action, all the action of your life, perform them in an attitude of a karma yogi. Once our attitude change, our whole life changes. If the attitude is defeatist, if the attitude is negative, if the attitude is frustrating, if the attitude is getting recognition from the people, then we can never achieve anything in our life. Therefore, Yoga Staha Kuru Karmani means first change your attitude towards your life. If the attitude is, let us take different types of attitudes. First, from small age to old age we will go. When we are young children, our attitude towards parents. If there is somebody called as enemy, it is my mom and dad. Clear attitude. Because whatever we say, they say no. But we don't understand that mom and dad, they have gone through the ups and downs of life. They have seen the world far closely for a longer period of time. We must take the benefit of their experience of this world and therefore let us take their guidance and listen to them. But our attitude is, my mom is my enemy number one. Daddy is a Hitler given up. Now with this attitude, when the child lives with the parents, do you think? The child will ever be benefited by this relationship cannot be. On the contrary, if the child is little intelligent and observes how the parents are managing their life, day and night they are running, working. Day and night they are thinking only about our welfare. So their sacrifice is far superior than our demands from them. The moment we become aware about it, our attitude changes. And when this attitude will change, our relationship with our parents will change. Friends, when you start seeing 
a friend in your own parents you will never come under the peer pressure and destroy your life now what we have done only change your attitude nothing else then we come to the age where we get married when we get married again the attitude between husband and wife the attitude between husband and wife if it is that of a creative understanding then there will be a different uh, relationship but if the understanding is family you don't know he is just like that i hate him once you have that kind of attitude you live there throughout life miserably the other way if you live with your wife family she is stupid all husbands have got this funny notion that the wives are stupid and i agree with them do you know why or else they would never have married this fellow you know their foolishness is already pub- made public by telling this is my the ladies are told they are my better half isn't it so what the ladies should tell about the husband they are my com- he is my complete fool but they are half they are his complete better and fool so the moment you change your attitude the relationship will change then we go a stage where we are now grown up and our children are younger and they are getting married and we are most unwanted furniture in our own house that time again attitude we have lived our life and made a mess of our life we are not satisfied with that we want our children's children to be brought up by us according to our whims and fancy why don't you allow your children to destroy their children why you are worried but we as the grandparents we neither are happy with our children nor we are happy with their children because everything we want everything should happen according to my ways the result is our children are fed up of our presence they always think uh, swami ji if you are going for a camp tell me what is the expenditure in advance i will sponsor one more a take more moment that at least for 15 days there will be peace at home Now imagine how much we become load and burden on our children because our attitude is wrong. On the contrary, take the other attitude. If they are allowing you to stay with themselves, live, live cheerfully, don't interfere with them unless they want something. Friends, uncalled for advice falls always on flat ears. but we go on advising them do this thing don't do this thing my heart ne lagana dena how does it matter get so much lost in that and that we imagine i am doing so much for my grandchildren but nobody understands me now the elder people should have more understanding or the youngsters should have more understanding we have to change our attitude and now the last one we have come to a stage wherein we are now fed up of our own life many elderly people toward the end of your their life they have this problem so i mean please tell me when will i die so i tell them amma when are you want tell me when you want to die there are many techniques available with the growth of science you always make fun but really i am fed up so when we are wanting to die understand we have become frustrated in life remove two desires from your mind your attitude will change first desire to live long second desire to die early 
remove these two desires, your attitude will be totally different. Thereafter, life will be lived through you. This is what the teacher says, Yogastaha Kuru Karmani. Once you change this attitude and view of life, then Sangam Tyaktva Dharanjaya. So the second thing, first you have changed the attitude, then attachment to all that you are doing or not doing. This is very important point, friends, please understand. Whenever we do something, many a times we get so obsessed with something or the other. Few examples of obsession. One example of obsession is perfectionist. If I am a perfectionist, I want everybody around me to be exactly perfectionist to my level. Then there will be no charm in life. Like you go in the western world. Everything is so perfect that they are, they are miserable also perfectly. Everything is standardized. In our country, you go to somebody's house and try to open the tap to wash hands, doesn't come. Then the child comes, Swami ji, humare yaan niche se hota hai. <laughs> what a joy it is. Something new. <laughs> the real joy of life is, don't be obsessed with anything. But what we will do, immediately we will compare. See, in the other countries, when they only stand before the sink, automatically the water comes. In our country, you do that, the tap will come in the hand, the water will come. <laughs> and become frustrated. I tell you, one frustrated man once told me, Swamiji, why can't the infrastructure in our country change? I said, who will change? You and me or somebody else? What can we do? I said, you can change yourself? Yes. Then accept one principle of life. If you want only infrastructure, you are exported. If you want infrastructure, you remain in this country. We don't say that we should not have better facilities. But only better facilities is not the name of a scientific living. We may be living perfectly, point by point. But what is happening inside? Frustration, selfishness, no sense of sacrifice, not looking in the, after the elderly people. And in this manner, from the age of 20, 21, the children are going to the psychiatrist, depressed, rejected, single parent families, the institution of marriage gone. These are the results of perfection in the outer world. Therefore, Sangam Tyaktva, let us not be obsessed with anything in this world. Do your best and focus attention on your heart. Sangam Tyaktva Dhananjaya. Hereafter, the third principle is Siddhyo Siddhyo Samo Bhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. Now this is the very important topic. Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. Equanimity is called as the highest attainment in life. Now what is that? How it is? We will see it tomorrow. Sri Krishna Narayana Govinda. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyonamaha Hari Om